Technically speaking, it's not very easy. So we'd like to go this way. It doesn't have to be Outlook, it can be Gmail, or we'd like to have an empty inbox. Now this is, all, this is one of the things you can achieve, but this is just an example of what you want to do. You want to get rid of stuff that's reminding you constantly you are trying to do some work and you're constantly reminded of other boring stuff that still needs to get done. For instance, there's stuff coming in from everywhere. I mean, a century ago, life was easy. I stood up, I went to work, I, I came home and I went to sleep. Now today I go to work, I already received a couple of SMS, maybe I check my mail, maybe uh, my, my friend called and asked me uh, could we organize some dinner for somewhere. Uh, there's all this stuff and I, I didn't even start working yet. Then I'm at work, I have to start doing all kinds of things and I'm constantly being reminded of this stuff that I need to do at the wrong time. So that's why this is the brains are a very bad tool. Uh, they are made for thinking, not for uh, organizing your schedule. They will remind you at the wrong time of important stuff. And when you're working, they will remind you that you need to uh, clean your office. When you're in your office, they will remind you of the stuff that you need to do at home. Uh, one nice thing that I appreciate in getting things done in this book is that it's more realistic uh, with regards to the way we live today. I mean, in the past I had my life at home and I had my life at work and there was, it was clearly separated and I just made a switch and I was in one mode or the other mode and life was simple. Again, this has changed. Take today, for instance, I think we are, many people are here in both a work context and a personal context. There's also the thing, remember promises. There's a nice song about it, very cliche, remember the promise you made. But this is about it. <laughs> so you want to be able to say, okay, I saw you three months ago, and did you look at that, the stuff you promised me, or vice versa? So, there's a guy called David Allen, he wrote two books with regard to this topic, this was the first one. It actually came out in 2001 uh, approximately, but it took a while until it got popular and right now it's high up in the Amazon.com sales ranks, which doesn't say a thing. <laughs> uh, now what is the summary that the author gives in one slide? The point is to get everything out of your head. You can't trust your memory. You have to decide what you're going to do with something when you see it. Hmm? Let me take... Uh, I've got this schema now. I, I'm running around my home and in my bedroom on the floor I find this paper. So I say, hmm, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? Okay, I don't have time to look at it now, but I'll file it. I'll put it in my inbox. And then later on, I will look at my inbox and continue processing. It's actually software for your head where you will divide the steps you take working with stuff and uh, you do one step at a time. Now I'm looking at the piece of, at a, at a stack of papers and I'm deciding, um, okay, this, this thing is something I have to do this week. This thing is something I have to do in that meeting when I talk to John. This thing is something I can do right now because it takes less than two minutes. That's one of the tips he gives. If there's something that takes less than two minutes, like a mail you get, you need to reply and say yes or no, just do it. Because if you postpone it, it'll, it will take much more work to look at it again and again and again. Organize reminders of projects and the next actions in appropriate categories. By putting stuff where it belongs, uh, dependent on the way you process it, you will be able to forget all the other stuff. When I'm at home, I don't want to see a list of tasks that are high priori priority that I have to do at work. It's no use, and vice versa. There's also an extreme aspect in getting things done. The extreme aspect being that uh, instead of waiting for your midlife crisis and saying, Oh, I should have done everything different. It's like the, the, the time when you look at your life and you do a, re a, a project review on your life and you say, everything was wrong, I will divorce and start over again. <coughs> Try to do that every week. <laughs> That's really extreme. 
and even to a certain extent every day. So there are, it's a bit, if you know extreme programming, there are different loops, there are daily builds, but here you have a daily review. There are iterations, so you have a weekly review, and you, have, you even have larger than, larger scale reviews. <coughs> Depending on, he calls that the distance you are from, if you are in a plane, you can be uh, on the runway, you can be uh, on the moon. <laughs> you have different perspectives to look at your life. You can look at the tasks I need to do today, but you can also look at, in five years, I want to be rich and I don't want to work anymore. And you write a book. For <laughs> um, so, what are the steps? Sounds very boring, but the steps help us to focus on doing one thing at a time, on managing uh, to handle all this information that we have. Collect, process, organize, review, <coughs> and do. Now the last step we already know. The problem is we do stuff, but by doing stuff we are not thinking about all this other important stuff that needs to get decided. So it's clear that we need a way to quickly decide whether something needs to be done quickly, where it needs to be done, who needs to do it. I mean, it's not even sure that I need to do it, and so on. Okay, if you look at the collect phase, I'll combine this with explaining how uh, Mr. Allen recommends implementing this. In, in the book, he has a first chapter, which is like a, a summary of the process, so you don't really need much time to start implementing it. In fact, I implemented it just based on some uh, web versions of the process. And there's a very convenient cheat sheet that you can use to implement this system. So if I look at collect, the, the collect uh, phase is intended to get all the information that's in your head or in your house or at your office in a big inbox. You know those boring uh, eight movies from the 80s where everybody <coughs> is in a cubicle and that gets uh, uh, parodied in the Dilbert cartoons? That's where you want to go. <laughs> so you have an inbox, you put everything in there. And it, e it even goes as far as saying, okay, now I'll sit, down, I'll sit down, I've put all the papers in my house that aren't categorized, aren't filed in this big box. Of course, the first time this really is a big box. <laughs> you just take a room and you say, this is my inbox. And then you sit down, you take a, a block of paper, and you write down everything that's on your mind. And each one of these ideas that's been bogging you, it can be something you need to do urgently, I need to go shopping with A, I want to learn Spanish. Each of you th these things, even though they may be important or not important, you put them on a piece of paper. That's the start. And you just put them in your inbox. <coughs> now he says, his experience is that you should schedule a weekend <laughs> when you want to start implementing this system. And the first day is that. <laughs> it really takes a lot of time. It really does. The second day, when you've, when you got rid of this, by the way, this, was, this is the startup that I'm describing. Yeah? Afterwards, things go faster. If afterwards you have something, okay, I have an idea, I scribble it somewhere, it can be a PDA, it can be a mail, it can be something else, and I put it in the inbox, which can be digital or not non-digital. The second day, I, may, I have to start processing this information. It sounds very much like what a computer program would do, and it's really very simple, because he says, GTD is really something for smart people which is ironic because the GTD system is very simple. It's really black or white, and that's the intention. And he says, it's really needed for smart people because smart people are the ones that postpone stuff. And they say, okay, I know I need to do this, but if this goes wrong, and if that goes wrong, so they are too intelligent. They think they are doing risk management and, and uh, all that stuff at the same time. And whereas people that don't think about what the consequences will be of what they do, they just do it. They don't need GTD. So that's why we need to process this stuff. Okay, we've got our stack of uh, our inbox. What do we do? It's a stack. We just take the top sheet. Of the top sheet. It's no use to take to search through it. It's no use to take the bottom uh, piece of paper. We just take the top, the first one, and we look at it. <laughs> we won't be doing anything yet now. Now what do we do? We ask the first question, is it actionable? I mean, 
sounds boring, but it's really important. It just means, does this say what I really need to do? Uh, when it says, call mother about uh, uh, anniversary, that's actionable. It's really, it's like a program that I can give to a computer or a piece of paper that I can, can give to somebody else and he or she knows what to do. If it says, organize dinner, <coughs> organize anniversary dinner, that's not, an, uh, that's not really an action. There's too many steps involved. Eh? I first need to determine the list of people that will be there. I need to find a place where we can eat. So as soon as you have more than one action in a, in a flow, in a project, David Allen calls this a project, which is much sooner than we would call a, a project in life. So a lot of stuff really is a project. If it's not, if it's not actionable, then we're going to put it away somewhere. <coughs> if we're lucky, we can just throw it away. And one of the nicest things about getting things done is that you have a really big stack of stuff that you've thrown away, and you never need to look at it again. Uh, in the beginning, it's a bit <coughs> Especially if you're optimized in keeping everything in case you might need it again. Then there's also a reference system. He really stresses that. I didn't really implement it as far as he uh, <coughs> says, but it means you need some sort of uh, filing system, which can be both uh, digitally or in paper form. You always need a paper form because you've got so much stuff that's not digital. Where you can put everything, that's what he suggests, A to Z, and everything goes into a different file. So even if it's just one sheet about your car insurance, you put it in the file and you, you, you label it car insurance and you put it with a C. And he says, do that for everything. You don't need categories, that's what he says. Put everything, I mean the C can also contain computer. And, and so. This and it should also be very cheap to add files and remove files. I've been doing that at work and it, it, it works. I've got a stack of files <laughs> and uh, it's just, he calls it, it's very known in the States, it's called Manila files. It's just like A3, in, in Europe, A3, fold, A3 uh, cardboard, cardboard, or folded, and you just put stuff inside. Um, then you've gotten rid of it, and you can review it later. Um, there, may always, there may also be stuff that's like, do it in my life, but I won't be able to do it now. So I have a, f I have a file called, an action folder called, some hey, maybe. Someday I will, I would like to do that, or maybe I would like to do that. And it's really like <laughs> once you start writing things down. So you probably won't be able to do all that stuff in your life. Um, there's also a process to remind yourself at a later date. It's like sending you a mail in the future. Um, and he calls that a tickler file. And uh, it's actually, you have a file system, you have 43 folders, it's also a community site, and the folders are labeled per month, and there's one, and per day of the month there's one. And what you do is you put the folder chronologically, if it's uh, September like now, you start with September, October, November, and so on, and in front you put the days, the one, two, three, and so on. So today we would put the 24th in the front, <coughs> And we can just send reminders to us by putting it in the correct file. So I put stuff for send, send uh, greeting cards for New Year, New Year and Christmas, I put them in this December. So when it's 1st of December, I, put, I pull out the stack from December and I just throw it into my inbox and process it at that time. So those are some examples for stuff that are not actionable. For actionable stuff, the questions to ask is, what is the successful outcome? That's really one of the strong points here, and also what is the next actions? When you have typical tasks lists in an Outlook or a PDA, there typically isn't a clarification of when is this done, and uh, how do I need to do this? When I say organize uh, anniversary dinner, uh, it doesn't say anything about how to do this. So I really need to think <coughs> Um, okay, it's done when we can organize it during that weekend and we have a bunch of people coming together, they eat and they are happy and my mother is happy that I organized it or whatever. 
Also, I need to think, what's the first action I need to do? So the first action may be call my parents to see when they, when they are available to set a date. That could be my first action. Because those are usually the blocking factors for not starting anything. It's, it's a cliche, but it's, it's the first step or the empty piece of paper. What do you do to start? You just need something simple to get you rolling, and then you can continue. There are other options. You can say, I can do it right now. If it, takes, it, if it takes less than two minutes, just do it. And then you can throw it away. You don't need to put it in any system, so you clear that. Maybe you can delegate it. That's great. Am I the best? That's great at work. Am I the best person to do this? Uh, you can do that until they all read the book. <laughs> 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 then things bounce back. <laughs> so that's a problem. Or you can defer it. You can put it in your calendar. You can say, okay, then I will do that. Organize. Once you've processed this information, organizing means, okay, I've decided what type of information this is, but now I need to put it on the list. Like I have, a, uh, I have determined that I first need to call my parents to determine a date for the party, then, okay, it's, it's a matter of calling. When will I do that? Not now. It takes more than two minutes to call your parents, always. So you put it in a folder called phone or call. I don't need to remember it. I've processed it. And I take the next sheet and so on. So things may be converted to lists, like a context list like phone or in the car or online or at work. That's really important that you have these context lists and when you are later in the do phase, you're in a context, you say, okay, now I'm gonna call people because I'm waiting for a plane, for instance. Okay, you look at your call list and you see, okay, call mother about blah, blah, blah. You pick up the phone and you call. And when you're done, you, you take the next one. You go into, you're much faster because you're doing the same thing at, this, in a, at the same time. Okay, that's organizing. Now, that's all very dangerous because I had everything in my nice <coughs> inbox. Okay, there are 1,500 items, but it's in there. I can find it. What now? I've put everything in uh, 20 folders, and how will I see what I need to do? That's the reason. <coughs> there are multiple levels of reviewing. You start with your daily review. For instance, you get to work. You look at... You first look at your calendar, what's in my calendar for today. Then you look at your action lists. These action lists are these context lists that we just mentioned, like call, at work, uh, action. And you look at these uh, actionable items, because all the items in those lists are things that you can immediately do. And then instead of just looking at either the high priority or a low priority, which isn't really uh, appropriate anymore these days because managers change their uh, mind all the time. You just look at the list and you look at, okay, how productive do I feel now? What type of work would be ideal for me? What are the deadlines? That kind of stuff. That's the review. And the do. It's also combined with the review, after your review, that was the daily review. You will also review once a week, you have the weekly review. Uh, David recommends doing that uh, Friday, for instance. If you're at home, you, may want to do it. you might want to do it uh, Sunday night, I don't know. But actually, you <coughs> go through all the lists that are uh, where you put your actions, and you just review them. You'll notice that some of those have resolve themselves automatically. You also look at a list called waiting for, which is the nicest list in the getting things done system. Everywhere that somebody promised you to do something, or when you send a mail where you're waiting for a question, you make sure it, get, it gets labeled with a waiting for category, for instance. Or you have a folder and you put a sheet of paper in it, and you see uh, Paul, okay, he lent uh, this video from me. You just review that once a week and you're up to date. If it's important, you can put it in your normal system and make sure it's on your action lists 
and make sure you will pick it up in the daily review. So in short, when doing stuff, you look at your context first, which filters the couple of hundred things you have to do. You look at time available. And if I see phone mother, <laughs> you see that, uh, okay, it will take 15 minutes, for instance. You look at energy available, and you look at the priority. So that's about the important <coughs> introduction to getting things done. How do you see that in the real life? I started with doing this for email at work. And at first I didn't want to use any extra tools. I used Outlook at work. And because we use Citrix, I wasn't really able to easily add add-ins. <laughs> so I had to use categories in Outlook and actually assign categories and use Outlook folders. Now there are add-ins for Outlook. For people using uh, Outlook 2007, for instance, there's an interesting blog post I read uh, yesterday from Simon Guest from Microsoft who has written some macros to uh, help automatically assign this stuff. Uh, I applied it to my personal mail as well in Gmail and there's a nice <coughs> add-in that's free called GTD Gmail. It's, called, it's available at gtdgmail.com which is a free Firefox extension that uh, uh, massages <laughs> the Gmail user interface so that the Gmail labels are used as uh, categories <coughs> for GDD. So that's about all. Um, of course it's too short to give a really big introduction. I will be doing the same session <laughs> at XP uh, days, Benelux, in a couple of months and then it will take an hour and a half. And so that will be too short, and it's a bit nicer when you can give some uh, exercises. But I just recommend to Google for GDD, look at a tutorial or a, a simple overview, try to see if you would like to see it just for your email, and if you like it, you may want to apply it to more than that. Thank you. I have one question. Yep. Um, if you use it not only for your uh, personal e uh, for your business email, but also for your personal email, yep. your snail mail coming in, etc. Yep. As you said in the be beginning, often uh, personal life and work life yep. intermingle. Where do you keep your folders? At home or in your office? In two places. So but you have two sets of folders. Yeah, but what's nice is that uh, I mean, a year ago my work uh, processing was completely different from my home processing. I mean, as in work was semi-organized, like software projects in the past, and home was chaotic mm -hmm. or undefined, which is for most people, I think, except those who are really organized. And now it's just <laughs> work became more like home and vice versa. So I have the same folder style <coughs> at home and at work, and I use the same naming conventions for lists and so on. So Ooh. that's also an advantage because it's a really routine you don't really need to, you need to think of it less and less. Yeah, and what do you do with, uh, for instance, piece of, an official piece of paper that comes, arrives in your snail mail at home, but it's something, I don't know, tax related and you need to get it signed by your company or by a lawyer. Or then I have an at work folder and I take it to work. <laughs> <laughs> there is something called, uh, that gave <coughs> itself, but I mean, you just buy it everywhere. It's just folders, it's called traveling file folders. For people who travel, you can take five folders. There's also an interesting folder he recommends. It's called Read Review. There's all this stuff you need to read someday when you have time, when you're waiting, but you don't need to reply. So when you're waiting somewhere, what, what this really helps to just fill your empty time. Right? When, you're, when you have to go to a doctor, you will always have to wait an hour <laughs> in many places. Okay, you're waiting. You just look at your read review, there may be some papers in there, or I may have an action. I have plenty of, <coughs> of actions called uh, Anywhere, and th they are like brainstorm on that topic. <laughs> so there's always something to do. Uh, three, three quick questions. Yeah. Uh, how big is your category system? Uh, it's pretty small, actually. Yeah. I mean, there's, it depends. You have uh, the categories for your uh, filing system, mm -hmm. which aren't really categories, which are just files. Right. And then you have action lists. Right, your action list category. 
And I mean, I have my PDA. It still survives. I'm still waiting for it to break, so I have an excuse. And I mean, a pound is limited to 15 categories. So you have to be creative. So I have agendas, like uh, my boss. I have a category where I have a, a note for my boss, and then I put the topics <coughs> in there that I need to discuss when I see my boss. I, I have anywhere, that's stuff that I can do anywhere. I have call, so that's a list of people to call. I have errands, very important. Errands <coughs> is like, okay, when I'm uh, going shopping, when I'm, when I'm in the grocery store, I need to buy salt. But it's also when I'm at the post office, I need to buy stamps. Uh, it's been there for months. I never see a post office that's open when I pass it. But <laughs> so there's no guarantee. But it's this way of context thinking. Then I have at home, online, wait review, waiting for, and work. Mm -hmm. And then there are some other lists that are less action related, like <coughs> books I want to read someday, music, movies, projects. Um, but that's the, that's the essential stuff. Okay. Are there, are there any restrictions in how, I mean, you personally, do you have any advice uh, in regards to how many things you would plot out on a project basis, the next action steps? You know, like when you sit down and start getting excited, where you're yeah, stuff well, going to be doing six months and stuff to do for tomorrow. But do you yeah. just start throwing it all out there? And I mean, it doesn't mean you don't have to do any type of project management anymore, <laughs> or, or right. it doesn't, it shouldn't replace. In When he just looks at his system, David Allen says, look at everything that can be done now. So even if you're working on a project alone, look at the, there may be three tracks that can be done parallel, and those 